Welcome to the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nedling. You are about to discover impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you, so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Be sure you visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now tune in, get ready, and enjoy the journey of emerging as a leader of exception in the 21st century. Welcome everyone to the Find Your Leadership Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Vicki Nettling, coming to you from Roswell, Georgia. The goal of this podcast is to bring topics and guests that will empower you to take your business or your life to the next level. Today, I'm very excited to have Brandon Barnum, and I have to ask you this weird question in a bit, (laughs) but let me first tell you a little bit about Brandon. Brandon is a serial entrepreneur and CEO of HOA.com, the number one referral network for home service professionals. While a single dad in 1997, Brandon was an early technology innovator featuring real estate property listings from realtors he partnered with and promoted. After learning the art and science of referrals, Brandon increased his annual income 10X in 18 months from 20K to 200K. Brandon has since closed over $500 million in transactions by referral and has founded multiple online referral platforms and networks connecting more than 5 million members in 195 countries. Brandon served as CEO of Code Breaker Technology AI, the world's first personality-based AI for sales. Interesting. I'd like to know more about that too. Brandon is passionate about empowering business owners and professionals with step-by-step systems for attracting profitable prospects and expanding their income, influence, and impact. He has a lot of things I want to talk about, but we're going to focus primarily on navigating networking events and having the top 10 tips to making networking fun, fast, and effective. But I am going to sprinkle in a bit about referrals and some additional things that I think you will like to hear. Please welcome Brandon Barnum. Oh, thank you, Vicki. Appreciate that. And so happy to be here with you and your guests. Thank you so much. And first of all, are you related at all to Barnum and Bailey? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I grew up believing that I was. My uh, grandmother uh, okay. told me that P.T. Barnum was my great, 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 great uncle. So I used to go to the circus, ride the elephants and feel like everybody was coming to my show. So it's part of my spirit. But when I was in my mid thirties, I was going to claim it on stage. And I decided before I I claim it (laughs) myself, I better do the genealogical research. And it turns out not so much. Uh, So part of my spirit, not part of my blood. Well, I just think that we'll just think that, that you are (laughs) <laughs> the greatest showman i'll take that P- hey P- any day. barnum is looking down on you saying go go brandon <laughs> absolutely one of my spirit guides absolutely that's my exactly guide. right <laughs> so brandon we always start with the easy question to get your creative juices going <laughs> where right. do you live where do you call home I'm in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, just outside of Phoenix and Chandler. I'm from Portland, Oregon originally, and my wife and I decided to move from the rainforest down to the desert, and we've never looked back. Yeah. Yeah. Phoenix is gorgeous. I love it. And Portland can be. I'm from Pittsburgh originally, and and sometimes I likened Portland to um, Pittsburgh because gray skies, (laughs) rain, all that fun stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So what is the number one piece of advice that you would have for someone to grow their business? 
Well, I'm a huge fan of growth through partnership. Honestly, our raving referrals book, half of it is about creating partnerships with people who serve your perfect prospects every day. Mm. At HOA.com, we serve homeowners. I know yours is a leadership program. And so you probably serve a lot of business owners or people that are in the B2B world mm. and in B2B sales. 84% of B2B sales start with a referral. Yeah. So uh, referrals are incredibly important. And again, when you create a team of people that are working together, my mentor taught me one plus one equals 11. <laughs> and so it's the I'll ultimate level. i that one too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. I freely give it to you. It was given to me, I pass it on. That is awesome. I love that. I've never heard that in all these years. So my mentor is Mark Victor Hansen, Chicken Soup for the Soul. I have to give ah, Mark credit because that's where I learned it. Excellent. So how do we master the art of the ask? Uh, this is something yeah. that I think so many entrepreneurs and small business owners mm -hmm. really have a hard time with. Um, and, and we need to do it to get what we want, right? And to get where we want to be. Yeah. So how do we do that? Well, it's huge. First of all, it starts with a spirit of service. So many people feel uncomfortable asking for referrals because they feel like they're selling something and you're coming at it with the wrong mindset. If you just do a little shift and instead of feeling like you're trying to get something, approach it from the standpoint of you're trying to give somebody something, you're really trying to help more people and Referrals are all about helping people, right? Mm -hmm. When we refer someone, when they say, you know, I've got this challenge and I'm looking for help. Oh, I've got a solution for you. Here's a gift. So a referral is really a gift that you give. And sometimes you need to give the gift of yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with the art of the ask, that's the first thing is that it really comes from this place of giving and serving rather than selling. But there's three steps to the mm -hmm. art of the ask. Number one, you want to set the stage. Number okay. two, you're going to listen for referral triggers. And number three, you're going to ASK to GET. So let's unpack that. The first thing you want to do is you want to set the stage. When you're meeting with a client, they've agreed to hire you. They've mm -hmm. agreed to work with you. What you want to do before you let them off of Zoom or out of your office or out of you walk out of their office, you want to say, before I let you go, would it be okay if I ask you for a favor? Now, uh, Vicki, if I ask you for a favor, what's your response typically to that? Sure, what can I do for you? Yeah, how can I help, right? And at the very least, it's, well, maybe, tell me more. So yeah. you're gonna get one of those answers, but nobody says no, yeah. everyone wants to help. So I I'd like to ask you for a favor, would that be okay? Vicki says, sure, great. I am so committed to wowing you with our service and going above and beyond so that you rave about us to everyone you know. So after I've proven myself to you and given you the results you're looking for, would it be okay if I ask you for referrals at a later date? Now, when you ask that question, are you putting them on the spot right now? No, not at not all. Not at all, not at all. So it's totally comfortable for them. What are you really saying in that situation, Vicki? Well, you're saying that you're gonna do a good job and, and therefore they're going to want to give you that, but you're not and, and really forcing them. You're it's asking them. Ears, okay. right? Yeah. It's right. exactly what they want to hear is, look, I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm going to do deliver superior service to you. And I'm going to wow you with the results for you. That's what your clients want from you. Mm -hmm. So when you set the stage, they're all going to say yes. And now what you've done is you've set the stage and you've gotten them to agree to give you permission to ask them for referrals later on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's step one, setting okay. the stage. Now, once you've got their agreement, now you're listening for the referral triggers. Now you're doing what you said you're going to do. You're going to wow them with your service. You're going to give them the result that they're looking for, that you're committed to delivering for your business. And you're listening for the referral triggers. The referral triggers might be literally Wow, <laughs> that's one of the things you want to listen to. <laughs> or thank you. Thank you, Vicki. This has made such a difference. I feel so much more confident in my leadership abilities because of your coaching, for example, right? right. 
Whatever that deliverable is for your product or service, you're listening for that expression of appreciation. And sometimes you need to ask questions that lead to that, right? Like, you know, I, I just want to check in with you on a scale of one to 10. How happy are you mm -hmm. with the service that we're providing? Oh, it's been fantastic. 10 out of 10, nine out of 10. Okay. If it's 10 out of 10, now you've listened to the referral trigger. The next thing you're going to do is ASK to G-E-T. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you feel that way. I love helping people like you get this result. Do you know of any, and you're going to fill in the blank with your perfect prospect, right? And right. be clear on the type of person or company that you're looking to serve and looking to attract for your business. Mm -hmm. Do you know of any doctors, any CEOs, any whatever it is, realtors, whatever your perfect prospect is that you think that I would be able to help because I love helping people yeah. get the results just like we've delivered for you. That's the art of the ask. Now, if for some reason you ask them, how would you rate this from a scale of one to 10? And they give you less than a 10. Maybe it's an eight, maybe it's a nine. The net promoter score says if it's eight or higher, they're likely to refer you. My recommendation, if it's less than 10, ask what would make it a 10? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Right? Yeah. Right. Because you want them to have a 10 out of 10 mm -hmm. experience yeah. with your company For and your sure. product, your service. And so sometimes you can make it a 10 right there and you don't even realize that you're almost there mm -hmm. and you can deliver that wow moment once you know what you don't know. Yeah. But when sure. you set the stage, you listen for the referral triggers. And then once you wow them, you ask them for referrals. They're totally comfortable because they know it's coming from the get-go. They've already given you permission yeah. at the beginning that once you wow them, that they'll be happy to refer. Yeah. So I want to just pause here to, just to remind the audience, as I try to remind you each time, if you don't have a paper and pencil and you're listening to this, please go get one now because <laughs> he's giving you golden nuggets that you're going to want to watch this replay and get again. So just wanted to make sure everybody's getting these notes because you're given some golden stuff. Thank you. What, so what does the future influencer um, in marketing look like, you know, well, I think what you're doing right now is an example, right? It's all about build, building your tribe. And that starts with your vibe. So mm -hmm. it success starts within, you've got to do the work on yourself. It's one of the reasons why sometimes younger people aren't as successful is because they don't feel confident in what mm -hmm. they're doing. They don't feel like they belong. I was uh, teaching a class on referrals on, last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And I was asking, there was about a dozen people there. It was a small group or having a little mini mastermind. And I said, what holds you back from asking for referrals and asking to create referral partnerships? And one of the guys that was there in the audience, he said, I feel like they're above me. Oh. Right? Like I'm afraid they're going to say no is what mm -hmm. he said to me. And this was a guy, he was about 40 years old. And, and I said, okay, so let's just unpack that. If yeah. they said no, what's the worst part about that? And, yeah. and I know it doesn't feel good. We don't want to feel exactly. rejected. But I said, aren't you assuming no if you don't ask? Don't you already have nothing? And if you ask and they say no, you still have what you already have. Maybe you've learned a better way or maybe you've gotten some feedback. But what if they say yes? Yeah. Right. And so we really kind of shifted his mindset and his thinking. But what was interesting to me, the takeaway was he was fearful. He was nervous. He didn't feel confident. And he felt like, wow, they're so successful and I'm not there yet. Yeah. yeah. A couple so things. I was include. just going to say a couple of things come to mind with that. You know, um, a no keeps the conversation going <laughs> mm. in, in the sense that you can ask those questions. You said, well, what would make you be a yes? And, or what could I do right. to delight you to, so uh, a yes is great, but a no is not a never, not now maybe, but maybe later, right? You just nailed it. When I hear no, I hear not now. Yeah. And often it's, I, I they don't have all the information that they need. Mm -hmm. 
I always teach you want to give them all the information they need to make a wise and informed decision. And the other thing is there's different personality types. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people who study DISC or uh, MBTI, I like to teach a system called BANK, uh, which stands for Blueprint, Action, Nurturing, and Knowledge. Those are the four personality types. And when you understand them, then you can get the yes faster because you can present information in a way that really resonates with the prospect or person that you're speaking with. Well, that is awesome. Bank, bank blueprint, action, nurturing, and knowledge. I yeah, will keep that. and check this out, Vicki. Look on screen. Uh, blueprint, action, nurturing. Oh, you got cards? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Because these work in the real world instead of like an online profile that uh -huh. takes forever. I, I say, do you want to see a magic trick? If I'm meeting with somebody in person, yeah. I'd like to see a magic trick. Who doesn't want to see a magic yeah, trick? Yeah, for I sure. Does. So they say yes. And then I, I say, read the information on these cards, sort them in the order of what's most like you to least like you that will help oh. me serve you better and save us both time. And what happens, I just did this with a, a, a potential investor for HOA.com. Mm -hmm. He's actually a, a law professor at Grand Canyon University. Yeah. We were meeting for breakfast last week. I handed him these cards in 30 seconds. He handed them back to me. And he was uh, knowledge, which makes sense because he teaches. Yes. Right? And then he was blueprint, very organized, systematic, yeah. process driven. And then he was nurturing. He's a people person. It's got to be good for society. Yeah. And action lasts. He doesn't need to be center stage. Um, you know, he's happy to have stability. And so in 30 seconds, he handed me the cards in the order that he was. In the next two minutes, I spoke back to him. Oh, this is fascinating. So what you're telling me is you're like this. Yeah. And then in three minutes time, he felt like I really understood him, which I nice. did. Because this is like instant empathy. Oh, my goodness. And do you give those cards away on your website or do you? <laughs> you can go to knowyourcode.us, know your code, know your N -O -W, code. N -O -W, although I do have N-O, <laughs> your code too, just in case somebody doesn't get it, but knowyourcode.us. And mm -hmm. when you go to that site, you're going to see the four cards. You'll drag and drop them in the order that's right for you. Oh. And when you opt in, you'll get a free report that'll explain exactly how you are. And it's fascinating. Super, and then super. you can follow up with my team after you get the report and they'll help you get the cards. Awesome. That is really cool. I love that. Isn't that fun? One other thing that came in mind as you were talking, I, I was going back to the young people yeah. in those 20s and 30s. And the young people in this digital age are instant gratification needed. Absolutely. And one of the things that we know in referrals, as we've been talking, is that it isn't always, <laughs> usually not instant, usually not. it's going right. to take patience and yes. the understanding that five or seven times <laughs> till somebody says, oh yeah, that's exactly what I need and, and how important it is that you keep following up. So in your experience, um, how, how do you coach people on that? Yeah, well, the um, the fortune is in the follow-up, just like you said, right? So you've got to have a system that helps you, remind you to stay in touch with those people and to build relationships over time. It is the long game, mm -hmm. but it's the guaranteed game, right? Again, 84% of B2B sales start with a referral. Well, mm -hmm. you're not going to win that relationship and those referrals with somebody until they really get to know you, like you, trust you. So mm -hmm. you've got to invest in one-on-one one conversations you got to follow up with them and ideally you're raising your your authority factor right that's what you're doing here yeah. people see you they get to know you like you trust you by listening to your podcast by learning from you and seeing the kind of guests that you attract to your show mm -hmm. and over time they get comfortable with you and then when somebody has an issue either they have an issue or somebody that they serve has an issue and they start thinking of, oh, I bet Vicky could help me with this. Mm -hmm. That's where referrals come into play. Yeah, that was one of the things whenever I read your bio and, you know, I knew that you were doing the home service. And, and yeah. I think that's, for me, I feel that I'm a connector of people, maybe not so much an influencer, but a connector because I want to have this service 
that says, you know, go to my podcast library and see where it is that you have an issue or problem that I might have somebody that could help you. So smart. So smart. You know, we did that in the raving referrals book. We have it in the back of the book. Mm -hmm. We have a section called experts and influencers, and it becomes kind of that recommended resources in the second book. So the second book is specific for dental. For dentists. For dentists. And and we've got six more titles coming out in the next year, raving referrals for mortgage pros, real estate agents, insurance agents, financial advisors, and CPAs is all coming, coming out in the next 12 months. But what we did in the back of this book is I actually have recommended resources. And so just like you're talking about, it's who are the companies, who are the people that can really help you deliver the results that you're looking for. Yeah. And that's so important. Oftentimes, um, if you ask me about a movie that I went to, I would freely tell you, if I love that movie, I would tell you all about it. And you would think that I was working for that production company because (laughs) I was so excited about it. And, and, and I, you know, when I really truly love something, I just am happy to talk about it to people. And, uh, I, I can't tell you how many times people ask this, like, are you getting a kickback on this? And and (laughs) badly, the answer is no, most of the time, but it's just one of those things where I think if you have that servant heart, that when you know something works and you hear the pain or the problem the person has that this could solve, you just want to tell people about it. And, you know, no, nothing on my needs side, I'm not looking for anything back. And I think in a lot of ways, that's why people that give more than they get are yeah. so great at what they do. 100% givers gain. That's really what yeah. you're talking about now. Yeah, it's interesting. And I was talking with Ivan Meisner a while back. He was the mm-hmm. founder of BNI. We were having that conversation around givers gain because he spent decades yeah. working with people all around the world. And he's seen that play out over and over and over mm-hmm. again. And to your point about, are, is there a, a kickback? I think that's a fascinating word, a kickback. <laughs> um, but You know, it's interesting because I've been in this referral game for 27 years now, and I've been building technology platforms. HOA.com is my ninth technology platform. My last was called refer.com. We built that to 5 million members, 250,000 realtors. And we had people all over the world, as you mentioned, from like, we had people that members in Antarctica. And I'm sitting here thinking, who is in Antarctica signing up for refer.com to try and get (laughs) referrals for their business? But we had multiple members there, right? So A to Z, Antarctica to Zimbabwe. But what's interesting is, over the years, I've surveyed people, and about half of people are comfortable receiving compensation for referrals. That's called affiliate fees. For yes, I know that know, well. <laughs> right, right. And then the other half are totally uncomfortable. Now, in the book, Raving Referrals, we recommend that you add a compensation structure to your business if it's legal. In some industries, you can't do that. Yeah. Right. right. But other industries you can and you should so that Mm. you've got referral partners who are incentivized. We believe the best way to motivate is to compensate. Mm. Absolutely. And people will do it for their own good. And if they can build a side hustle by building your business, how cool is that? So one of the things we do at HOA.com, we actually have a two tier affiliate plan. It's not MLM. But we pay 20% to those people that give direct referrals, 20% Mm -hmm. of all lifetime membership revenue, and then 10% second level. The reason we do the 10% second level is, you know, I just, I was meeting with a guy yesterday. He's introduced us to the CTO and the senior vice president for Remax. Wow. Wow. Now, if we end up doing a partnership with Remax, he's going to end up getting 10%. For every single Remax agent that signs up through the company. Yeah. So that second level is important for the leverage, especially when you're working with influencers. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Now, for those that feel uncomfortable receiving compensation, we just say, what charity would you like us to donate to in your name? Oh, nice. That's yeah. awesome to do that. Yeah. yeah. So how can I find new clients without spending money on leads? 
which I yeah. need to do. Well, <laughs> absolutely. First, start by building deep relationships. I came from the mortgage industry. When you told that story of mm -hmm. me being a single dad, making 20000 a year, I got into the mortgage industry and within 18 months had 10x my income because I had a mentor Right. That's part of what you're doing here, Vicki, is you're mentoring people and teaching them how to get to success faster. So I so acknowledge, admire, and honor what you're doing. And when you have a mentor, that guide that gets you there faster, it, it helps in so many ways. What I learned was that building long-term relational equity with people is where the referrals start to flow. And it doesn't cost a lot of money to do that. Sometimes you might want to buy them lunch or buy them coffee or take them to a movie or a concert or you know a game, something fun, mm -hmm. but you don't have to spend that much money. Uh, it's really about investing time in those yeah. relationships. And what I always recommend is that you start by looking at who is your perfect prospect. Yeah. Right? Maybe if you're in B2B, maybe it's a CEO, a CMO, a CTO. It depends on who it is that you serve. Maybe it's an HR director. Mm -hmm. And depending on the industry, it can be a whole your whole host. But you need to figure out who is it that I want to be in front of mm -hmm. and who is already in front of them. Who do they trust? Who do they go to? Mm -hmm. Who do they look up to as a resource for the answers to their questions? Those are the people you want to build relationships with. Yeah. If they've got your perfect prospect coming through the door every day. Yeah, they've got their ear. And if you can solve mm -hmm. the challenges that they're coming to them with, mm -hmm. even better. Yeah. I was just uh, talking to somebody that focuses on tax mitigation. Mm -hmm. So he works with people that are facing either capital gains taxes or they're earning over $2 million a year in income. And so they've got some major tax issues, right? And so he focuses on CPAs, yeah. financial advisors, mortgage lenders, realtors, and business attorneys. Why? Because those are the people that are typically serving those clients and he helps them shine because mm -hmm. they're able to bring him in as a resource to help their clients save money. Mm -hmm. So he's serving the professional, helping them serve their clients, their clients. and it's win, 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 win. Yeah. So <clears throat> you have the power of appreciation, grow your business yeah. through praise and parties. So I, I have an anti-aging and wellness also business, and nice. um, it's a multi-level marketing thing. Yeah. And we do parties, but uh, it's, it's founder is Jeff Olson and he is all oh, about yeah. praise and gratitude and, nice. and personal development. And uh, so I just wanted you to talk a little bit more about that because I know the impact it has in that community uh, yeah. that I'm part of. Huge. Jeff Olson, there's a name I haven't heard forever. I was in the People's Network uh, yeah, yeah. five years ago, I think, <laughs> what, 27 years ago. Wow. Um, great man. So uh, it's two different things. The appreciation exercise, and really we've turned it into the appreciation challenge, is mm -hmm. go to your phone right now, look in your contacts, and find five people that you want to build relationship with. Text them a message, either just a text or a video message, and just let them know that you appreciate them. Hey, mm -hmm. I just want you to know, Vicki, somebody just asked me, who are the people I admire most? And you came to mind. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great thing to do. You just give them love. I mean, yeah. literally out of the blue, the way that, they, how do you think they're going to respond? I mean, Vicki, if I just sent you that text message, what yeah, would your like, response be? Uh, you know, you immediately just reach back and thank and, and give, I, I, you know, I would be giving the love back to you too. If 100%, that was the case. Absolutely. Yeah. And now we're in a conversation and that's really mm -hmm. what we're talking about here. Number one yeah. is just, it's selfless. You're not doing it with any agenda other than just to make their day. I just did it earlier today. Mm -hmm. I uh, I have this woman in Las Vegas. I just think she is so super sweet. And uh, I said to her, hello, my golden queen. Hope you're having a joyful day, attracting and manifesting prosperity and abundance in every oh. way possible. Oh, you know, and that's awesome. That, with that would brighten your day, day for sure. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Absolutely. That's oh, the appreciation exercise or challenge. Now, as far as parties, 
we do parties all the time. In fact, in HOA.com, we're all about connecting communities. We want neighborhoods to connect yeah. in. And so we help people do ice cream socials and watermelon eating contests and <laughs> you know, picnics and parties and barbecues. And we did one recently about a month ago or so. And it was in a neighborhood close to me. So I actually got to attend, which is awesome. And it was a neighborhood barbecue, the uh -huh. realtor and the mortgage lender that that licensed that community through HOA.com and are building that community. We're throwing this party and it didn't cost them a lot. They bought some sides, but every they had all the homeowners bring their own meats to throw in the grill. But the coolest thing is I was looking around and kids were playing basketball. Kids mm -hmm. were playing cornhole. There was a kickball game going. And there's about 50 people, neighbors that had come out for this thing. The music was playing. And as I looked around, not one single person was on their cell phone. Yeah. Everybody was just having fun. And if that's yeah. your business model is to create fun and help people celebrate, whether it's your past clients and you want to do a bowling night or a yeah. top, top golf contest or even just a happy hour. We we throw happy hours all the time where it's just, you know, cocktails and connections. We just tell people to go to a certain location. It doesn't cost us anything. We don't typically even have to, you know, recommend that people buy the food yeah. you just invite people to the party and you get credit for inviting them, whether they show up or not. Yeah. And if you think about it, especially after COVID and being so isolated, communities need to, to do things to be together, to really build okay. back that, that feeling of a safe place to live and a great place to live and, and get, getting to know their neighbors again, really. That's right. People want to belong again. They want to yeah. feel part of something again. And yeah. you know, I, I love that you said safe. One of the things that we're doing is we're working with the creator of the Neighborhood Watch program back mm -hmm. in the 80s. And yeah. we're creating a safe kids zone in each mm -hmm. neighborhood. Nice. And this is basically going to be a safe house, right? Where we vetted somebody to ensure that they're a responsible adult. But that way, if the kids in the neighborhood feel like they're being bullied, abused, or God forbid worse, they'll know that they've got some place to go to ask for support and to get help. Wow, that's awesome. That's really good. I work with kids nine through 17 to teach them uh -huh. how to be stronger as communicators and in, nice. in public speaking. And a lot of the groups that I work with are at-risk kids and they're trying the other classes that they have um, teach them things from entrepreneur skills, which I totally love, to um, just understanding family and and mm -hmm. leadership and and respect. Yeah, which um, sometimes you know they don't get that at home. They don't get that those things. Parents are busy and involved with other things. So I love to be involved in those kind of things where these kids are given examples that are positive and um, will help them thrive as opposed to cause them to be visiting a, a, a jail cell. Huge. It's so important. I, I'm a big brother. My wife's a big sister. Oh, awesome. So, you know, we're passionate about the mentoring program. Um, I've got a 15 year old that I mentor. He's a freshman, right? And that's a tough time in kids lives. Yeah. And this, this guy is being raised by a single mom. He's got two other sisters, but he watched his dad get hauled off to jail for life mm -hmm. at age four. And so, you know, he didn't have any male role models in his life. And so a couple times a month we get together, usually we go grab a bite to eat. He's a teenager, so he loves to eat. And then he likes going to the movies. Yeah. So he's become my movie buddy. And then, you know, we just went to a movie last week. So it's important just to yeah. be able to invest in the next generation. I was just speaking at a young professionals organization and these, it was so cool because I'm mentoring this kid. He's about uh, 29 years old yeah. and he was leading this group within the chamber of commerce. And it was so awesome 
to see him lead because yeah. I don't know him in that capacity, right? I'm coaching him and mentoring and to see him lead a, a group of his peers of about 12 mm -hmm. people brought me in as kind of the, the speaker, mm -hmm. the, the trainer, but it was so rewarding and fulfilling for me because I'm investing in him and to see him show up and shine was awesome. Yeah. I know that feeling. I've been doing things like that since 2011 for the kids, nice. but longer for adults. And and even the adults, you know, as I see them grow yeah. as more confident leaders, it just makes my heart sing. It's like I have this huge family. I only have two kids of my own, but I think I have thousands of kids all over or and kids of all ages too. That's beautiful. Thank you. I have a 30-year-old who works for me at HOA.com. And so um, I get the pleasure of not only training him, but watching him shine as a yeah. leader. Like he just did 90 day reviews with two of our team members and sent me the overview. And I'm just so proud of uh, the man he's becoming. It's super cool. So good. There's a, what we were just talking about leads into one of my rapid fire questions for you, All right. which is how can we be charity champions, which this oh. is like close to my heart, but I'd love to hear. Yeah, massive passion for me. Um, so th that's why I, I speak about charity champions all the time. I believe that every single business owner and quite frankly, business professional needs to have a charity or a cause that they associate with and communicate what they're doing. It's one of the reasons I do Big Brothers, because I love telling that story, yeah. not because I want to claim it, but because I want to inspire other people to get off the couch and get in the game and take action and make a difference. But you should, if you're a business, I shouldn't say should, if you're a business owner or a business professional, I invite you mm -hmm. to find something that you're passionate about. It should be in alignment with what you deliver to your clients yeah. so that there's a tie-in for HOA.com. We are passionate about veterans. So we do, we support veterans causes. Mm -hmm. Obviously the homelessness issue is one near mm -hmm. and dear. So, you know, we, we work with like Habitat for Humanity. So there's all all kinds of charities out there that make a difference. What we're doing is we're actually choosing a different charity every single month to partner with and to promote. And then we invite our members, our pros, to get involved with that charity for that month if they don't already have one that they're passionate about. But you can go out there. You don't even have to have a charity. It can be just be a cause. Maybe you mm. want to help clean up the school. Yeah. Maybe you want to help you know, work at the food bank. And what we recommend is that once you decide what it is you want to do, and in the Raving Referrals book, there's all kinds of options, and you can go online and find all kinds of options. Go to volunteermatch.org mm -hmm. and just see what's going on in your local community and how you can get involved. And then share that with your mm -hmm. clients, with your customers. 93% of consumers say they want to know what the companies that they're buying from are doing to make the world a better place. For sure. The reason I went to work for UPS when I um, when I was working for Arby's for five years and mm -hmm. they were moving to Miami and I was not. <laughs> uh, yeah. At that time, Miami was not a great place to be, not the way it is now. And but uh, the comp Arby's was big on charity work, mm -hmm. and so I was looking for a company that was big on charity work. And I, every time I went to an event, UPS was there every time. Nice. And so I um, felt it was a great fit. But what I learned from all the years that I've been doing charity work was that in areas, I was administrative for a number of years and in areas where I thought I wasn't the smartest person or I wasn't equipped to do those things. I was working side by side with CIOs and CEOs mm. and, and people that, you know, were influencers in their company. And they're talking to me the whole time I'm volunteering with them. And I am really job interviewing without <laughs> right. even knowing it, without even knowing it really, <laughs> right. because right you learn to see that they aren't, you know, this unapproachable person right. and that um, they can teach you something in those times where you're hammering nails for a habitat house or painting things or fl putting flowers in or, or handing out food at a shelter. All yeah. of those opportunities are opportunities for you to grow as a leader and mm. be more confident in what you do. Beautiful. 
So true. So true. And they're looking for people that are making a difference, right? That's what we as leaders are looking for is I always teach my, my team. I'm looking for people that stand up and that take action, yeah. that get involved and make a difference. And so you're absolutely right. And you're, I was on a podcast earlier today and the person that I was, that was interviewing me was talking about how she's a financial advisor. And when she moved to a new city, she would start by doing a golf foursome and she just put it out into her chamber of commerce who wants <laughs> to come golf. And that gave her four hours on the golf course. Oh, yeah. Right. So it's kind of like volunteering. You've got hours mm -hmm. that you're working side by side with somebody that, you know, shares similar values at oh, least God, on yeah. some level. So it's a great strategy, isn't it, Vicki? For sure. It's time now for us to share my screen so that we can get your information out to those that are listening. So for those that are listening, the website is https colon forward slash forward slash ravingreferrals.com slash Brandon Barnum. Again, ravingreferrals.com slash Brandon Barnum. And he's on Facebook at ravingreferrals.com, spelled out D-O-T-C-O-M. I love that. Ravingreferrals.com. And LinkedIn, he's Brandon Barnum. Instagram, raving underscore referrals. Twitter is raving referrals with initial caps, raving and referrals. And then YouTube, you just, I'm sure, do raving referrals or Brandon Barnum and you'll find his information. I'm going to turn it over to Brandon to talk to you a little bit about what you can find on that website. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Vicki. Yeah, there's so much there. I mean, if you go to ravingreferrals.com, one of the things I'd invite you to do is do the referral score quiz. This is really insightful and enlightening if you go to referralscorequiz.com or go to raving referrals and then click quiz it's got 10 different questions you'll rate yourself one to ten and it will tell you what your current score is and what people find fascinating is usually just the awareness and the understanding of where the gaps are in their business helps them to shift their practices and boost their score significantly quickly. But uh, you'll see links to the Raving Referrals book, which you can get on Amazon. We have a, an online course as well. And then lastly, I think beyond the Raving referral side is if you are a professional who serves homeowners, we're looking for top quality pros at HOA.com. What we're building is essentially next door meets Angie's List awesome. meets Zillow. And so it's everything about your home in one location. And we're looking for top quality professionals that we can promote on a neighborhood by neighborhood basis. So you can go to HOA.com and uh, you'll see a link there. If you're a pro, come check it out and join the mission, join the cause. And I don't think that we touched on, but is this where we'll find the referral partner blueprint? Ah, good point. Yeah. Referral partner blueprint. Thank you, Vicki. Is at HOA.com slash blueprint. That is a 16 page PDF that is kind of the short version of raving referrals. I took some of the main points and, and put it into the ebook version. So that's a PDF you can download and uh, really get the net of what action steps you can take quickly and easily to generate quick results. So this has been great. You gave so many great tips. And again, if they didn't have their paper and pencil, you can go to my YouTube or my website to uh, see the replay of this. But uh, I would to thank you for being such an awesome guest today. We had a lot of good talk here going. Good oh, conversation. It's my pleasure. And, you know, <laughs> I, I saw in your podcast, it's all about confidence. And, you know, yeah. if you're listening to this right now, you need to feel like a champion inside, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't feel that way, one of the practices that I do in my teams is find a superhero avatar, right? <laughs> find somebody that inspires you. It can be for some of our people, it's Wonder Woman. For me, that's mine. Ah, is it? Are you it Wonder is Woman? Wonder Woman? Okay. For so years. for me, I am Neo. We we teach to say it in the affirmative. I am in the uh, I am. And if I'm ever feeling like I'm not fully confident the way I want to feel, 
I just embody that I am Neo and I know I can fly and, and shift everything with my mind. So if you're looking for that confidence boost, find someone that you resonate with and inspires you and just feel like what it would be like to be them. And take that energy, that confidence into your next meeting, your call, your Zoom, your conversation, and you'll feel more powerful because you are powerful. Yeah, so good. Well, it has been wonderful chatting with you. And I just want to remind our audience, as I always do, that life is a journey and mm -hmm. it is up to you to enjoy the ride. This is Vicki Nettling signing off. Thank you for tuning into the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nettling, where we share impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Remember to visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast.